And welcome back to Squire Syndrome Podcast. Boris Johnson is gone. Yes. Hello. I'm your host, Ben Gilman. It's, I hope you're doing well. This is the best TV podcast in the land. Says hi. Sorry, I will not bring my political views onto this podcast. But Boris is gone. <laughs> Get a haircut, you fool. All right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit giddy today, man. It's taken such a long time for him to go. I'm just feel happy. Um, as always, I'm joined by the titty slapper, the titty master. It's Tara Chloe. Hello. Yeah, I love romantic. And I'm going on record now. Adam Cole, Kyle Riley, CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Tom Ishii, Igna Jagnoff, Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson, Randy Orton, Rhea Ripley, Jungle Boy, Darius Martin, Big E, Santana, Koto Ibushi, Jake Atlas, Anthony Bowens, Leah Hurst, and Buddy Matthews. You are all officially pussies compared to Troy Salmon. He was sick one week. He came back the next week. What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Ben. There you go. Spec, I like that. Spec of my name. That was it. I love it. I love it. I was going to make a joke last week about how you don't rep yourself because you might for an injury. But then you went, you, you didn't turn up, so you were injured. You were... You can you, man. Happy birthday, man. Hey, I'm back, I'm back now. now. Hey, I'm hey, still I'm ill, Ill, but I'm still here. You know? I thought I cursed you last week. Oh man, hey, I'm still ill, but you know, I say, yeah, I'm gonna do it for the, for the squad, for the team, you know. I'm, I'm back. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. That was a wrestling joke. I love like, that. You know, everyone's injured right now. <laughs> well, I don't care because Konosuke Takashita is going to slap Eddie Kingston up in Rampage later tonight. So that's going to be a, <laughs> that's a match. That's going to be a good match. So, anyway, how are you guys? You both went here last week. Oh man, I'm, I'm here again. I'm still ill, but you know what? I'm, I had said, you know, yeah, can't, can't miss another week. I said, I got to help boy Ben out, got to help Tara, Helen, the whole crew. I said, you know what? Yeah, I can't miss another week. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, speedy recovery to um, Helen, who's got COVID. Yes. Oh, been, yeah. you Helen. No jokes. I think Tara's the only one that hasn't had COVID. Was it you, Troy? No, I've never had COVID. I've never had Troy. I think you've had COVID, haven't you, Tara? I did. Yeah. Tara's had it. I've never had it. No. So you're the last one standing, and you will get it at some point. So. I'm fighting, I'm fighting it. I'm just, trust me, I'm fighting it. I, I, I can feel it trying to get me. I'm like, nope, won't get me. Slap that hand, like, no, bitch, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's the last man standing right now. Me and Colby, I'm, I'm winning right now. So I think today everyone's naked. There's no webcams on because it's hot. <laughs> yes. It's a naked lunch out here, guys. It's going to be a naked summer if it keeps up like this. I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm, at this, I'm very close to walking around my flat with no trousers on. I swear <laughs> to God. Don't care anymore. It's going to be naked every day. Every day. Just, 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 just uh, pick up work calls. Hey. It's been naked. No, I'm joking. No, I'm Don't go for Homelander. <laughs> just imagine how awkward that would be. So I've got a squeakiest chair in the world today. So, what have you guys been up to since we last spoke? Um, pretty good. Yeah, my new job is good. I'm happy. That's good. I actually matched with a lot of hot Korean boys on Twitter. Korean Tinder, Korean Tinder. I paid for it. Tara's already got her one track mind working. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Was that far <laughs> on this podcast? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that. No, that was definitely not me. I was coughing. Okay. <laughs> you say. Okay. I go with it. <laughs> so I've been busy um, just enjoying a week off from work. Um, it's been fun. Um, this is back. Everything is good. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just, 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 just his heat is amazing. Amazing. Oh. How, how's it amazing? Well, I'm enjoying it because, you know, we have cold 90% of the year. So I'm enjoying it a little bit. Uh, I'm enjoying the heat a little I'm bit. I'm enjoying just... next week, though. I'll just be recording this podcast as a puddle on the floor. <laughs> just melt. Oh, next week is going to be for British people. It's going to be brutal. Yeah, 
Uh, my gosh, he's going to be. And killed. to the good people of England, I hope you take a wash, you smelly bastards. Please. <laughs> The second you'll follow London, I have a shower, please. Begging you. Please. please. Don't, 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 don't crowd these on these tubes, by the way, as well, these buses, please. Take a wash. Soap and water, guys. Soap You're not water. allowed on the bus until you've had a wash. This is the new law. I'm the new Prime Minister. Boris has left. Oh, my God. Soap and water, guys. Soap and water. Soap and water. Basics. The basics. Just the basics. That's all basics. you need. That's all you need. The basics. Come on. Look at it. Oh, do you know what I watched the other day? Actually, this is movie talk. I can't remember. What a great opening sentence that was. That. <laughs> Last night in Soho. Oh, you finally seen it. Okay. Yeah. I love it. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Edgar Wright is on a 100% roll still. I, the, 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 tell no, you're telling no lies, man. It's got 100% track record right now. This guy's got the legend. Even the world's end is your weakest film. Damn, just just go go smoke that. Like that's still a four star film, but it's still his. Exactly, because that's that's literally my, my my weakest film always. To be honest as well. Yeah, that's like a near perfect film. Still, it's ridiculous. The man doesn't do the bad movies. Uh, this guy's this guy's solid. The thing is, he doesn't do that much either. So when he when he does do it, it's, it's like it's for a reason. It's quality. And this time, it's not just about the fast editing and any of that. He changes up the style a little bit. Exactly. exactly. It's not like it has been with other Edgar Wright films where it's like quick camera shots. It's just more surprise me. It turns into a real horror pick as well. I was very impressed. Uh, I, I, I was like, wow, wow the changes they did. I was like, okay. Uh, uh, so it shows so Soho, Soho, like the real Soho. You know what I'm saying? Like, you and me have had many times in Soho, Troy. Jap, Eat Tokyo. Yes. Yeah. Tara knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think it's my favorite Japanese restaurant in London. Oh, I love Soho because of that restaurant. Oh, mm-hmm. right, we should go when you come back. Oh, I haven't been to Tokyo in years. We definitely go. We definitely go. Soho is awesome. Used to live there pretty much. No, like um, yeah, Soho. It was a good last night. In Soho. Really happy with that film. Like really fantastic. Matt Smith is Matt Smith. I, I'm beginning to see what what you mean. He plays the same character all the time. Yeah, a lot of people say that as well. He changes his hair colour to blonde. <laughs> That's Matt Smith's ra- acting range right there. Just change his hair colour. <laughs> oh, is, it, is it the same? Anyone seen um, Morbius? He's literally the same character in that as well. Just He's just really ill in that. Like, Does he ever cut his hair? Like, do no, so- no, that's the same, same hairstyle, everything. Same. He even looked like he just came from the set of Doctor Who in that movie. It was the same. Yeah, and when he's like Prince Charles or the witch, what was it? Um, he's in Game of Thrones right now, yeah? Just changes his hair blonde. Not much of a difference there. Come on, Matt, shave your head bowl. Give me something different. Yeah. Nah, man, that's, that's his claim to fame. That's his, that's his look now. <laughs> he has his look, that hairstyle. He hasn't aged a bit, though. That's disgusting. He looks the same. It's disgusting. Matt Smith is disgusting. Um... But, like, it's a good film. Anna, Anna Taylor-Joy, by the way, her English accent is... I've said this a lot lately about Anna Taylor-Joy. She plays more Brits than she does American. She's, you would think she's British the way her accent is so good. Yeah, she... Yeah, she I love Anna Taylor-Joy. I love her. Joy. I, love her. I keep forgetting she's American. You forget that she's British sometimes. She can be an honorary Brit if she wants to be. She's fantastic. I love her. Oh, my gosh, she is. I totally thought, like, it was a bit, I thought it was going a bit obvious, but I should know better from Edgar Wright, really. I thought, like, who the, 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 the I thought, like, Matt Smith's character was in present day. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh, 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 because yeah. I totally thought that she was following her mum at one point. That's how good that film is. I was like, oh, you pulled them, you pulled the rug underneath me. <laughs> I can get I kind of blocked when you saw the old man, and I was like, okay, he's got, he's gonna be massive character guys. It's gonna be in the past. I knew it's gonna be something like that. But I was like, okay. I was like, all right. Okay. The little breadcrumbs that you see in the in the can movie. Can we just say how nice it is to see there's a character who tries to be her boyfriend? Yeah. 
I'm so glad that they're nice characters because they got together. And I thought that guy is a true gentleman, like a proper. I was so proud. I was like, yo, he's gonna, gonna survive. I was like, come on, you gotta live. Yeah, you can't kill him, man. He's such a nice guy. I'm really happy to see a non creepy male character for once. I was like, yes. That, that's like the that? thing I love about this movie as well. Like, it was just it was a good all around movie, like on both sides. Exactly. And he's like a real proper. In a film where most men come off creepy, he is like the angel. There are good men in the world, and I'm glad that the film turned its head on its head yeah. as well. Not preachy. No. Not preachy, but it gives female empowerment as well. And I think that's a really good movie. I didn't feel talked down to or anything. Well done. I'm really happy with it. Exactly. exactly. I like, I like, I like that. No pre yeah, there's no preaching in the world. I can, I can, I can rascal do that. Lovely jobbies, man. Lovely jobbies. <coughs> yeah, he's a solid man. Edgar Wright is the man. He's the man, bro. Lovely. What else have you seen? So, last night, Soho. What else did you watch? Um, What did I watch? Shit. I've watched so much stuff. I watched Halloween Kills. Oh, you watched Halloween Kills? Okay. Uh, hey, hey, okay. hey, hey. I've watched a lot better horror recently, I think. That's the problem. Yeah. It's true, it's true. Halloween oh, Kills, ah, oh, yeah. He does kind of go off a little bit towards, like, the end. I, I've watched Censored as well. So, you know, I've watched a lot of good TV. I've watched a lot of good stuff recently. And I'm not being rude, but you need to be better. Yeah. yeah. I think slasher movies are kind of dying off a little bit. What, what me? Halloween Kills. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't watch it. Oh, yes. That's what, I, that's what I saw. I literally forgot to bring this up as well like, before we even got on the podcast. Now I can say it, but I literally should remember that I've seen it. Oh, my goodness. It's insane. Anyone of you are people seen men? No, no, not yet. No. I oh, not. my God. That's <laughs> trippy. That Man. movie is trippy. Trust me, I, you got the, oh my gosh. <laughs> it looks like a game changer. It's, it, it's mad. That's what I'm going to say. I, I showed my family it all day. They were like, what the heck am I watching? I was like, yeah, men. It sounds like that's what it is. <laughs> it sounds like the most damning yeah. film of a man ever, which is why yeah. I'm interested to see it. Because it's written by the guy from who did Ex Machina. It's 28 Days Later. Yeah. yeah. That's why I want to watch it. <laughs> it's, it's mad. I was like, when well, you do the trailers, I know the trailers, they know, like, kind of like getting into but there's stuff behind it. Like, what the heck? So, and, 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 you know, the legend of the main character, the guy. Yeah, you know. Oh. But is it good, though? Is it is it good? Good? Is a legend. But yeah, it's, I, I'd say it's a good movie. I'd say, I'd say it's a good movie. It's trippy. It's trippy. If you're into that, that weird stuff, then it's a really good movie. Really, really good. If you're into the weird. I've got one for you. Yeah. Resident Evil, welcome back to Raccoon City. Oh. Oh. Don't yeah, get me started. <laughs> Have you seen this thing? Yes. Oh, what do you think of it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, that. Next, week, next week, right? Yeah, Resident Evil is getting a Netflix series next week, but I'm talking about the Resident Evil Welcome Back uh, to Raccoon City. The movie, yeah. I think I've seen the entire thing when I was younger. Can, can, can I just talk about this movie? Because this movie... Yeah. And is, you can talk about it. Yeah, that, let's just get this straight. So you know the characters, right? So yeah. you remember in the game how Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Wesker, Leon S. Kennedy were all... Yes, in Raccoon City, yeah. they weren't. I love that bit. Mm-hmm. I love that Claire Redfield and Chris Redfield were adopted at Raccoon City. It just doesn't care. No, the movie just does not care at all. One bit. It sticks two fingers up to the characters, and it just—I don't know. And by the way, I'm not even talking about race swapping characters. I don't mind that so much. That's fine. But Leon is not a clumsy twat, and they've made, they made Leon... it to a football with the whole movie. I was like, that was terrible. I mean, it made, it made Leon an idiot, and I'm like, that's not Resident Evil. Leon's a cool dude. That like, you got I the like, I like Leon. That. Yeah. 
Yeah, like I don't even mind. No, that in, in the movie, in the movie, it was, it was terrible. He was terrible. I, I watched it and I went, okay, he's not white, but that's fine. I don't care. That's not a big deal. What, what you've done to the character is you've ruined the character. So yeah. that's my problem. So it's not good. You've made him look like an idiot. Like, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. And Wes could be not a good guy. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> then they turned him at the end. I was like, what the heck is going on? It's, it's, it's awful. It's fan service but in the wrong way. In the, the worst, worst way. And it looks like it was shot for 50p. Like, they're, they're, where's the budget? I was like, at first we see the trailer, I was like, okay, it looks low budget. I was like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a shot. And then I saw the movie and I was like, what the heck is this? This ain't Resident Evil. This is not Resident Evil. One bit. Terrible. Yeah. The heck is going on? I was like, oh. That, the, the one that killed the most, I was like, flipping Le- that Leon killed me. I was like, oh. There is a bit where he's got headphones on and he doesn't see a blowing up tanker and it just comes yes! Why are you making comedy in a Resident Evil? Like... I'm not going to say anything about Resident Evil the series until it comes out because it looks like it like do its own thing. That's fine, but mm. this that isn't taken on again. Albert Wesker is being rebooted into a scientist. I'm just sitting here like, what do you keep? Why don't people get Albert Albert Wesker right? Why why do they keep screwing this up? The only one close to that would be the original Resident Evil series was um. The one where he's just, just to the point with the power of the black, the black, black shades, shades. Hair. That, that's, that's, that's Albert Wesker, not a good guy. He's a cool, cool in the movies, like the, the later movies, like the ones you know, he's teleporting and it, it looks sick. But um, these new ones, it's terrible. They don't know what they're doing with him. No, again, it's not a case of race swap the character, but he's not a scientist. It's like he's a bad guy, so you kind of need to stop making him a good guy. Like, that's what I don't get. Uh, yeah, he's never a good guy ever. He should never be a good guy. Bit weird. I just found it a little bit weird. The choices, um, but I'm I'm going to give it the opportunity next week to impress me. Right, you know it's hard to figure it out with all the um, you know Umbrella Academy and bloody Stranger Things has all come out in the last couple of weeks. It's something yeah, yeah. it got lost at the back somewhere. Yeah, well, yeah, when I finish off Stranger Things and then the boys finish those off. Well, what else have I seen? So I know we start off with movies, but I've seen a lot of movies more than TV. Yeah, I can't like... remember. Oh, I know what I watched. I can't remember what I watched. Great, I've forgotten. Brilliant. Oh, oh I forgot. Oh, wait, I remember. Okay. Um, <coughs> a lot of stuff recently. I said this off. I said this off. Off podcast, but um, crimes of the future. I saw that one, yeah. So, this is just for off, off podcast, but I said I might as well say it on, on the podcast as well. So, so crimes of the future, David Cronenberg, body horror king, where this future, this kind of dystopian future, where uh, well, a dark, bleak future, where people have these organs and they're, they're changing, but people don't know why they're changing, and people use these organs as art. Some, well, some people do, and kind of like do surgery in themselves, remove certain um, um, organs out of their body, and then all of a sudden it will just like restructure itself once again. It's just it's crazy, it's insane. But they have all these kind of these kind of sub these kind of um, coffins almost in a way, these kind of operating tables, um, what cater to their needs, or they have like a special chair where their body starts to change. They're obviously morphing into something else. Some people eat plastic. It's really weird. It's, it's a weird sci-fi movie. And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so just real quick. This little boy, he was like, it was um, he, he started off the movie eating plastic. His mum literally just kills him. I don't know. Kills him. Straight up, gets a pillow over his head. Said, no, nah, these abominations, you have to go. So then that's the kind of, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of premise of the actual movie so far. I know. Um, find, find out. out. You know, no. Um, um, all these teams are changing their own division, the ice division, where they uh, find out why they have they to have wipe them out before the rest of humanity finds out about this. So it's kind of mad, mad premise, but David Cronenberg, he does what he does, but 
for me, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It was, it was kind of a letdown to me in terms of like, because I love body horror. I'm a body horror guy. I don't know about body horror. They know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm a Cronenberg nut. But this one is just, uh, nah, this one's not it for me. But that was another um, movie, Crimes of the Future, I well, saw recently. So yeah, oh, that's, that's another one. Actually, one more before we go. Uh, VHS 2. I watched that. Oh, VHS. Okay. I like the first one. Yeah, I know. So I, never saw something. I wasn't too sure. Like, I'm not being rude. Yeah. Um, but these, the first VHS is brilliant. Yeah. Second one. Have you seen it, Troy? I've seen the I second one. Yeah, I've seen the first one. Okay, so one of them's good, but there's a zombie one that's really crap and boring. Okay. Half of it's good, half of it's bad. I've heard 94 and viral are better. The next two. Yeah, viral. 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 Yeah, but VHS two avoid not great, very boring. Mm, oh, again, I think I've hit my, I think I've hit my limit with found horror footage. Yeah, yeah. Found 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 there's a time on those. Yeah, the shelf even like Paranormal that. Activity moved on in the new one. So, yeah, that's on Paranormal Paranormal um, Paramount Plus now apparently. So I'm gonna have to go get a free trial of that so I can watch that one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Good. yeah, that's good because it fell off a cliff after five. Yeah, because the intro me. The last one. one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to start because we've got to talk about TV and stuff, because, you know, this is a TV podcast. Yeah. yeah. I've started to watch Top Boy. Okay. Season one, or from, so we're talking Summer's House, as Netflix has called it. Yeah. Um, I've to watch the first season. It's gritty. Um, you know, I mean, we've talked a lot about, on this podcast, representation. Yeah. yeah. So in my back of my mind, it's a bit cliched. But mm. having said that, the characters are very compelling. Okay. And unpredictable. <laughs> it's about um, what would you say? It's set. Up for? It's in Peckham. I think I've been there. Yeah. And it's about a bunch of drug runners and stuff. And um, I mean, I love it. Because it's unpredictable, it's a bit realistic. I've heard that the Netflix stuff is better, mm. better budget. But how do no, you? No, do no, it? I've seen a couple episodes of Top Boy, but I never really followed it like that. I've watched so much stuff like Top Boy, I just never got into it. How, what is there like? How do you feel about it? As um, how do you feel about Top Boy? Uh, I don't know, man. I just. I just after watching stuff like Killer Hood and Killer Hood 2 and stuff like that, I just never got into Top Boy. Because I just had my fill of like gang gang shows. I just had nothing, especially English shows. Yeah, I just kind of feel like that's why I'm not enjoying it. I feel like it's uh, a, 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 like it's not... I feel like it's really hard to like criminals like that. You know, like, there's nothing really redeeming about them. Yeah. yeah I just, I just, I just, I've, had enough of them. I've watched too many of shows like that. That's why I just had enough of them. It feels like a cliche. Yeah. Oh, look, black people, drug runners. I'm just like, well, that's a bit shit. Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I might not continue to watch it. I've tried to watch Top Boy before, but I've just never felt the the. How do you say? It? Yeah. yeah same. It's just cliched. It's all the worst cliches that you could give black actors, basically. Um, I think. Um, it's not fun. Um, I mean, I'm struggling with that one. I have watched Arcade 81. Oh, okay. okay. Which is a horror show on Netflix, which doesn't been renewed for a second season. Uh, okay. Yeah, this one. Have you heard about this one? Um, archive 81 
Ah, yes, I heard about it. But I've heard that. That was everywhere at one point. That was advertised. Make out. So it's about a, a um, um, Dan, who mm -hmm. is an archivist, takes a job restoring damaged videotapes. But he finds okay. himself getting booked. Yeah, exactly, Tara. But finds himself getting pulled into a mystery involving the missing director and a mysterious cult that they were documenting. Uh -huh. I mean, have you seen any of it yet, Tara? No, but I, especially on my watch list. You need to do because the, the main character Dan is a really interesting, quiet character. So you know that like we were saying Top Boy is very for a certain type of actor, very limiting. Yeah. So this black, this main character is black, and he's very cool. He's very laid back. He's very funny. Um. So we follow him. So basically what it means is that you take a damaged tape and you restore the tape by cleaning it a while. Yeah. So he's following these tapes of um, a woman who, so this goes back to, I think, her name's Melody, yeah. So she goes back, maybe I think 93 or 94 these tapes go back to. So we're in the modern day. Okay. And um, he goes to this creepy place in the out in the countryside. He's paid by this rich person to restore um, video footage documentary on an apartment building that burned down and we find out that his dad's in, um, involved uh, in okay. so we get little flashbacks here and there but at the moment what annoys me is 128.47 million hours in the first month and it's not enough to get it a second season like that's ridiculous. What? 128 million hours in the first month of it being shown. Yeah. I heard about that. I don't know. I don't know why they're cancelling anything right now. But um at the moment I'm not I've only I have a few episodes in. I'm not quite too sure if he can he seems to be having dreams and can go up to her, but we haven't seen them cross over yet. So there's a little bit of mystery. Yeah. Um, but it's creepy. There's a cult underneath the building. Oh, right. Right. So those, those, those hours were like a cult, basically. Yeah, and it's uh, James Warren has helped with it. Oh, no, awesome. James Warren, man. When he gets involved in this stuff, it's always good. James Warren. Um, <laughs> And uh, Mamo Duo Ati. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. I'm not very good with hard to say names. Um, he's really good. I really like him. Um, brings like an everyday character to the to the. To oh, the oh, 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 you're not black guy. You're talking about the main guy of Alpha Day One. He's the he stars um on the new Jurassic Park, Jurassic Dominion. He stars that. Oh, he's great. He's a good actor. Yeah, I thought yeah. there's more. I thought Jurassic with Dominion as well. It's a good movie. He's a really good actor, and and at the moment, I know it's. I hope there's not a cliffhanger at the end of the season. That's all I'm hoping now because it's got cancelled. Yeah. I'm concerned that we will get to the end of the season and there's going to be a cliffhanger and it won't get resolved. And I hope that they just ended it. Yeah, hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. But go watch it. Maybe Netflix will turn around and go, hey, maybe we should do a second season on that. Yeah, yeah. We need that. Because I've heard such good things about that show, though. I've heard good things about it. From Netflix, man, if 128 million people watched it, what the hell does it need to, to get like a second season? I don't know. What the heck? 128 million. Does the show, does the show um, use a budget? It doesn't use a budget, does it? No, but it's well shot, so it disguises the budget quite well. Okay. Uh, Nowadays, you can get really good HD footage, so you can yeah. really disguise a good budget. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so... Well, I've heard it should be about season, second season, so I don't know. I don't know what they're doing over there. I don't know. Netflix is kind of losing its mind at the moment. Spending money on monsters. So they want to do a One Piece live action. That's the problem. <laughs> what the heck? That's going to be a bonfire. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not going to work. Have you seen Monkey D. Luffy? He already looks punchable, and not in a good way. Oh, Jesus. The actor looks like very punchable. The guy, the, the character's punchable anyway, so you want to make that, that worse, doesn't it? 
No, but the main actor in the primary they've released, he looks very punchable. Oh, it's not a good start. And we all remember Bebop. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that John Cho from Bebop is actually Kuma? Yes, I knew it all the while. I was like, hold up. It's not it's Kuma, the weed Harold. guy from American Pie and all those other King Kuma, not Kuma. Kuma's the Indian. Oh, the Kuma. Oh, the Kuma. Movie. Oh yeah, Howard. But like, I was like, hold on, it's the weed guy, it's the drugs guy. What the hell? It's the guy that got the munchies. What the what the hell? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's me. You know, That's me at the moment. Oh, I watched a bit more of Heartstopper. It's still okay. So uh, yeah, it's interesting to see a guy deal with his sexuality. Well, he's not too sure if he's gay or straight. It's interesting. Ooh. Yeah, heart stopper. Heart stopper. Heart stopper. Hopefully, you don't heart stop in the sun. It's a heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who's next? Me. Go on. Okay, so I'm actually going to talk about the career again. Okay, where am I going? Money highs to Korea, I can already see uh, it oh, away. I'm going. Right, anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about the Korean money highs. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, to be honest, the storyline is actually really nearly similar to the original one. and uh, But this one actually focuses on the joint economic action. So in a Korean money heist, uh, South Korea and North Korea are reunited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so because they're reunited, uh, actually there's a lot of country bumpkins from, from the North, like influxing into the South. And a lot of them are not able to adapt to the South Korean way of life. And so hence they become uh, immigrants, cheap immigrants and so on. So I think you all know uh, Tokyo is actually the narrator. So basically she's a North Korean country bumpkin who served in the North Korean army. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, so she comes from the South and she has a very difficult life. But in the end, um, she actually turns to a life of crime and killing uh, those money loan sharks for those who ill treat ill-treat North Korean immigrants. So she becomes a wanted person in South Korea. And uh, one day, the professor finds her. And uh, that's when he brings her to, you know, uh, introduce her to the others. So basically, this is the, as is the Korean version, the team actually consists of, like, South, South Koreans Korean and North Koreans. Koreans. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, they were picking their names, and the reason why I actually bash Tokyo a lot is because uh, so basically everyone picked the name of a city they like, like there's Denver, there's Moscow, and then there's Nairobi, and uh, for Tokyo they asked her why do you pick Tokyo, and she said like it's because we're all going to be doing bad things. Then I remember. Okay, you're a North Korean country bumpkin, a communist who served in the North Korean army, and you hate Japanese. Oh my gosh, oh no. Yeah, I mean, that's a big no-no for me, though. I, I hate communists as well, and country bumpkin ones, yeah, which she is. So, um, Berlin's also a North Korean. He escaped from a, a concentration camp in some shit hole in North Korea. So huh. I said that country should But uh, you see, uh, North Korea is close to China because, you know, they're communists. Yeah. Oh, and um, who is that? Helsinki and also, they're also North Korean bumpkins. Actually, not exactly North Korean, but they're from the autonomous Korean prefecture in China called uh, Yanbian. That's actually near the border of the North Korean. And yeah, they're all bumpkins because it's, China anyway. So so um so the story actually begins when they try to rob the joint economic area, which is near the DMZ, the demilitarized zone that actually is at the border of you know south and north. So they actually try to rob 
that place and uh, as usual they're like students on a field trip and so on um so yeah it basically is a repeat of the original version just that everything is uh asian but there are a few differences mm. okay do you remember Sangha from squid game yeah yeah, yeah. he's in berlin Uh, okay, okay, he's really in the show. The actor. actor. And. Uh, what, what else? Oh, have you guys watched it yet? Huh? Mm -hmm. Have you guys watched it? No, I, I've, I've the original and this one are in my list of things to Yeah, I, I finished off the original, can't finish it off yet. Okay, okay, I'm still actually watching the original one after watching the Korean one because the Korean one only has like six episodes. But, um, wait, wait, okay. don't worry, is it tied to the original one? Is it, is it any kind of clues or ties to the original one or not? What do you mean? Is it separate, separate to the original or? Oh, sure. it's separate, but the storyline's uh similar. Okay, so it's a separate, separate type of thing. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but the storyline is similar, yeah. So, uh, Okay, okay, and Denver looks like he doesn't bathe the Korean version. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. What? Uh, Let me send you a photo. <laughs> no, 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 it is true. He looks like that, that one Indian guy, Essie, and doesn't bathe. Oh. Huh. So, oh. how many sweaty man titties are in this bed, Tyler? Oh, wow. oh, yeah, he, he does have his man titties. I mean, he's Korean after all, so yeah. Oh, jeez. The, there is a sex scene, though. That's right up your street, now, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually more than half as well. Uh, to a guy that doesn't bathe, I am not too sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Here it is. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sure. I mean, okay. is it Yeah. You do look like he doesn't bathe. Huh? Wait, what? Yes, yes. look. You look. What's going on, Tara? What's going on, Tara? He doesn't bathe, right? Don't you agree with me? Oh, okay. Now I see now. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So you're calling out, don't wash. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we so got uh, the uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the rest were so so. Rio is cute. He kind of looks like the typical K pop idol. He actually reminds me a bit of BTS in this. Of course, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Ben was going to get triggered, bro. A bit of BTS. Yes, of yeah. The That's classic. Cute. Yes. <laughs> ben, ben, ben enemies right there, yo. His nemesis is, is ops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And the, the window shot dummies that is a pop. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, we need more BTS. We need more BTS. We need more BTS. Right. Yeah, yes. And the director of the joint economy, but in the original version is the director of the min. You the Korean version guy. Titty show. BTS. <laughs> oh, um, <man>. no. <laughs> Uh, the director is an asshole piece of shit. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Yep. So is it better than the original or is it too close to the original? Uh, I think it's just too close. I mean, I haven't finished the original yet, so I cannot draw a conclusion on the original. I haven't watched the original. I've just watched a bit, though. Uh, I'm midway in season one, so yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
So you like the Korean one a bit more then? <laughs> I don't know. I cannot say. Wait, how many episodes do you watch the original? How many episodes do you watch? The original, uh, the five seasons. Now, how, many, how many episodes have you watched? Like, like four or five. Yeah, yeah season, season one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I watched, yeah. Just, just what, season one? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so you can make a judgment of that if you watch sort of season one or through it. So what do you want you to prefer? The, the, English, the Spanish one or the Korean one? Um, now, in terms of the visual, I would take the Korean one. Okay. I, I can't wait for the uh, Korean versus Spanish version. Crossover. <laughs> I should do I should that. That would be awesome. It's like it's putting together one big crossover. Like the really shit Avengers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I gotta go watch the original one. I gotta finish it off, man. I didn't give it a chance. I only watched a few episodes. I watched that probably three episodes of the original one. I had to finish off. He's one because that show was, well, what I watched, it was good. It was getting good. And I just stopped watching it because I was not watching other shows at the time. That's why. Yeah, there's too much competition still. Yeah, it's way too much competition. Mm-hmm. Okay, so have you got anything else for us, Tara? No, that's no, all. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, Tara. Amazing. All right. Troy, my boy. All right, let's out. do it. No, we always have a lawyer. Let's do it. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to save the other one to a, to a last. I've got two. Um, I'll go for the first one. Um, it's called, I know, Ben, Ben, you might have heard of this. Mm. It's, on, it's on season two right now, but I'm, I'm only in like, I've literally just only seen episode one of season one. But the episode one that I loved, I loved it. So I'm going to finish it off at some point. Uh, it's going to be soon. So it's called We Hunt Together. Mm. Nope, I've seen it. Oh, it's, English. it's an English show as well, by the way. It's a British show. Um, it's it's Bad 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 Miles. A mind in Caulfield and Deep Water. That's a hell of a cast right there, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, you know Eve Miles already, Torchwood. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, she's she's aged badly, though. She's not aged well. It was that nice beat of that iron in the face. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on, man. Come on. I'm, I'm not being Mr. Nice today. Oh my goodness, Eve, man. Oh, wow, Eve, I love you. I love you. No, I love you. So she's really good in this. Best to talk to you uh, if you hit with a hammer. Did you look at John Barrow? Anyway. <laughs> I knew they were going to talk about Barrow, but I knew it. Um, um, okay, here we go. So, you know, uh, Bubble C stay um, really good right now. He's like, he's, uh, I think, I think that he's, he's solid right now. He played the DI, and um, now he's a DS. Like a, there's like a cop type of team up kind of happening right now. He's her boss in terms of because he um, basically watches other cops in terms of like what they do, how they act. So he's, he's in charge. He's kind of watching over Eve, um, Eve's character in the um, in the show. And she no, she doesn't like it. She's like, what is this guy doing here? Like, there's like people uh, inspecting other cops. So that's the kind of thing, you know. what I'm saying it's just like internal affairs, that kind of thing. That's kind of similar to what he does. And a murder has has gone down in the first episode, and it stars. What's his name from um, EastEnders? He used to be on it. Um, he used to go out with Sharon. I can't remember his name now. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just trying to find it. Uh, well, I'll check. I'll check. Him over but yeah, so he, he's he's just, he's he's in this one. He's the EastEnders of um, fans of him. He's like this kind of guy who. Um, he goes to this club and he's with this girl and they literally they go into the, the toilets because um there's this there's this um, black guy called um, who's Deepo Olo. He's, he's, he's Ola, I should say. He, he's a guy called Baba and he he's works in the toilet. He gives people like either mints or gives them um like actually hand sanitizer goes, okay, get your hands, da, 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 that kind of thing. You know the guy who's that that kind of thing, yeah. So you see them go to restaurants, you see the guys go to the toilet, and you see a man there, he's helping you out. Uh, so that's kind of his job um, in, the, in the episode. And he sees um, his character, um, and he goes to help this woman because he's like, he's like, hey, 
because he was like grabbing her up and like literally trying to kiss on her. And she was like, hey, hey, you get, get off me, get off me, that kind of thing. So she's getting attacked. And he steps in because it happens inside the actual club and outside the club now. Mm-hmm. So outside the club, he sees it happening again and he just clocks this guy. Beats on him, beats on him, beats on him. He's about to pick up a rock. He's about to kill this guy. But she, the one who dies with, stops him. So basically what this show is about um, of like, like kind of relationships of people who can drive people to do bad things. So that's the that's kind the of thing. Um, um, they like each other. They go on um, rides together. They go on bumper cars and do all these kind of things together. And the guy who goes out with that um, with the girl who's in the club, he wants basically he wants her to sleep with him because he paid for her. It was like, almost like an escort type of thing. So he paid for it. Like, hey, I only on the, on the, what, what I paid for. And then she that's goes to then she goes to um, uh, Bob, 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 character. Bob. And says we have, to take out. we have to take him out. So she kind of gets him to kind of do her dirty work to kill this guy. So that's the kind of premise of the um of the episode and the show so far. It looks like they're like the season one, that's the main kind of story that's going on right now. Um, um uh, Baba C said Eva Miles' characters are trying to stop um um Barbara and this and this girl, um uh, Frederica, of like committing crimes um for each other and that kind of thing. So it's kind of like a mad, uh, that's why it's called We Hug Together type of thing. That's why it's called that. But it's, it's on Alibi. It's on like a, a paid English um, channel. Place. But I don't know if you probably can watch it elsewhere. But that's the last way you can find it. It's, uh, I think it's six episodes, six episodes right now in season one. Mm. Six episodes each, each season. But it's, on, it's got two seasons right now. But I'm still on episode one, season one. Um, I just wanted to like literally just talk about it real quick about something called We Hug Together. This is a really good show. So good, I can literally talk about this uh, episode. This is just one episode I'm talking about, and I can talk about it so much. But um, the acting is solid. Cinematography is, is is awesome, by the way. I love the cinematography of this uh, this show. It reminds me of another show. It reminds me of a show called American, American Gods. Gods. Anyone seen that show? Yes. The, the yeah, cinematography of that kind of like, like uh, reminds me of um, um, great, great shots. shots. Style, like, very style. Also, imagine that last time Soho, that kind of style, the um, Edward Edward Wright type of style in in that movie. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so it was nice. Uh, uh, very highly stylized, mm-hmm. type of show, which I found interesting. So, yeah, so that's the first pick. Uh, we hunt together. Uh, watching Alibi. I don't know if you have a there, but you have a way to find it. Check it out if you can. Two seasons out right now, 12 episodes. Check it out. Um, so that's my first pick. We hunt together. And my second pick is gonna be a bad one, it's gonna be such a contrast. It's gonna be such a contrast, guys. But you're gonna be like, you're like, what? You're like, what? Second pick is Miss Marvel. Mm. Yeah, you're completely right. That is like drastic. Man, one week without superheroes and back to normal. I was, <laughs> I had to do it because I, I literally just, I was literally bored. I, was, I just started watching it. I was like, oh my days, back to back. But um, yeah. I know have you guys seen Captain? Um, oh, she's a Captain. I was about to say, have you seen Miss Marvel yet? Not yet. No, I'm not going to. I'm so super <laughs> oh, yeah. really, it's, it's really just kind of a quiet taste. Is it good? Uh, kind of a quiet taste. taste. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I find I it find pretty entertaining. It. Especially if it's just something to watch. It's really it's, um, it's something good to watch, you know. Why is it quiet? Uh, say again? Why is it an acquired taste? The quiet taste because it's like it's very it's very kiddie the way it's um shot and uh, certain parts of the story that's very kiddie um, at times but at the same time you like you think of childhood you're like oh my days like I feel like I'm gonna kid again watching the show when you think about it mm. um uh Miss Marvel Disney Plus anyone that's seen it um it's uh five episodes out right out right now of what show five I'm up to date um so we got uh Kamala Khan you know Miss mm. Marvel so this uh Muslim girl <clears throat> likes to daydream. Anyone doesn't know the promise of the show. Um, she finds this uh, mythical, magical um, bracelet from her family passed down from her great grandmother, mm-hmm. which she hasn't seen. But she, until until that, towards the end of the um, fifth episode, you start to find out about her history. Um, but it, it blends the Muslim culture um, so well with like modern times. I like I like the way they've done it. It's very. Uh, 
more cultural which I like as well that kind of thing as well mm-hmm. um, yes yes very good very good and that's what I mean treating characters Nick Kamala Khan she's a very good actress I'll say, I'll say that she's a very good actress I'd say she, she carries this show very well um and even 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 if you see that outside of the, the show as well, she's very very um talkative. She's very smart. Mm. Yeah, and no, that's no, no, like she even takes me off Kevin Feige sometimes. She's like, this is this the was it the the one nine nine that was it six one nine 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 universe something like that because it's not canon. And I love that as well because he's like, yeah, it's a six one six universe. She's like, no, nah, it's not. <laughs> it's stuff like that was makes her funny, and I'm like, it's so true because the stuff that happens in the MCU is so weird. Nothing to do with the original continuity of the actual comics. It makes no sense. To think to yourself, it's not the main universe. But yeah, stuff like that what makes uh, um, the w- woman uh, who plays Kamala Khan, um, Iman v- uh, Villani, I think his name is. Iman Villani, I think it's her name. Yeah, it's her name, her real name. But um, she has these powers, can create, she can stretch, can create um, uh, part, physical parts of matter to like, stand on or run on or create. Um, she's like, she's almost like an ice man. Mixed with Mr. Fantastic, that's basically her abilities. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so she can travel from time as well. As well, she can, she can time travel from time to time as well. She can do that, which is oh, what the heck? I don't know if she's still doing that. I didn't know that was part of her abilities, but yeah, she can do almost anything. She's she's OP as a character, if you know, her, like her origin, she's OP as heck. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she's grew up as this fan of Captain Marvel, blah 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 blah, that kind of thing. Captain Marvel trash. But um, <laughs> I ain't got the ball. I ain't got the ball. I ain't got the ball. But um, yeah. So she's kind of an idol, and <clears throat> she she basically finds out that okay. I don't want to spoil it because I'm not going to spoil it because Ben is not going to watch this anyway. He's not going to watch this. No. He's <laughs> like, he's just like no. <laughs> but he's like no way. He's not going to watch it ever. But um, she, she finds out that he's. he's a jinn. So they even bring a jinn out of storyline into this, the mythology of the jinn into this storyline. I thought it was interesting. Because apparently, yeah, because apparently bracelet brings out the power that's already in you and channels it. So I was like, wow, the jinn. I was like, and then it was the mythology of the jinn. It's usually a bad thing, but the way they've done it in the show, I find it, I find it impressive. Like people who grant wishes, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? People who can distort reality, which kind of makes sense with her abilities. With this bracelet, can that channel that? If you're you grew up in like a, for because apparently she's from another another dimension. Apparently she got brought here from like, um, like with mm-hmm. this bracelet. So I was like, so interesting. I was like, okay. I was like, all right. So he got me into it. There's some heartfelt moments and some funny moments. And I was like, okay. Because I've, I've talked about it before, but it's much now. so it's it's much more family uh, driven now. And her powers are kind of like more pronounced, which I like. Um, I'm, I'm can't get into it. It's it's it's, it's, it's uh. Coaxed me and it's it's a uh, it appeal to my childhood. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say on this show. It's uh, it's uh, it's interesting. I'll give it. I'll give it that. It's, it's it holds my attention. I'll give it that. But yeah, that is my uh, second pick right now. So that's Miss Marvel. Uh, yeah, Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Five episodes out right now. So I think there's still more episodes to come. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's me done. Okay. Lovely job, Rivers. Well, it's drastic when we come together, yeah. I know it's a bit drastic. <laughs> I just I just think I should ban you from talking about superhero movies and shows on this podcast <laughs> every <laughs> fucking yeah. week. Every fucking week. Anyway, so I I think we're gonna wrap it up. Would you guys like to pimp your podcast? Your um your YouTube, sorry. Oh, okay. Check out my channel below. Uh yeah, I'm gonna upload other content. Um, you know, Asian men cities. <laughs> it's so bad I'm not in Korea in the summer. I'm stuck in this shit all oh, like, I can see many men cities. Oh, yes, you will. So you'll upload those the man titties. Don't, don't worry about that. They're, they're coming. Yep, yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Legend of All 101, uh, YouTube, uh, reviews, reactions, pop culture, all that good stuff. Just check me out over there. Legend of All 101. Yes. Mm, okay. Okay. So, um, the email is inside the description of this podcast. So is the Twitter and the Facebook. And Alex Tutorial's great psychologist psychologist website. Um, 
and everything else. So I'm not going to bore you with all the details. It's all in the link below. Just go check it all out. Loads of cool stuff there. And right, I'm going to wrap it up because I'm trying to keep these podcasts to an hour now. We're not rambling anymore. Um, so it's goodbye from me. Goodbye, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Next week we'll all be puddles. Enjoy. <laughs>